Good morning and welcome back to my course uh, Partition of India in Print Media and Cinema. Today we are going to start uh, with Women in the Context of Partition, a topic that we have been discussing um, uh, through the last uh, several lectures. So, a topic that we have discussed in the uh, last few lectures. So, <coughs> as regards Pakistan, we see when we talk about the question of legitimate and illegitimate child, Pakistan had already developed a hostile relationship uh, with uh, India's national interests. And so, uh, it was uh, perceived that Pakistan has violated Hindu women's sexuality through abduction and compulsory cohabitation, conversion of their religions. And uh, this raised the issue of uh, legitimacy of the children that were born as a result of uh, wrong uh, or uh, unnatural uh, unions, wrongful unions uh, as and what would be the position of such children uh, in, in the uh, future formation of committee. So, uh, what uh, would be their position as members of uh, the um, new nations that were uh, being shaped, being fashioned. So, leaders such as uh, Sardar Bhupinder uh, Singh Man and Chaudhary Ranveer Singh uh, would uh, portray India as morally sup superior to Pakistan a country that took it as the, its liability and responsibility to protect and return the abducted Muslim women to Pakistan under the Abducted Persons Recovery and Restoration Act of 1949. And uh, so, they, uh, through this uh, behavior, paternalistic uh, welfareist behavior, India was uh, expecting similar reciprocation. Uh, uh, by, by by from Pakistan, similar reciprocation from Pakistan. So, uh, but uh, it is uh, India says, uh, according to Indian records, Pakistan was constantly uh, acquiring. Pakistan uh, was uh, acquiring but deferring the process of returning of the Hindu women. So, during the re rehabilitation process. Uh, a lot of uh, historians and feminist critics uh, put this entire operation and procedure into question as uh, uh, there were uh, a number of problematic aspects uh, that were with, uh, that were observable during uh, the procedure of, of recovering and uh, repatriating women. Police for example, were given the authority to search and seizure and it would mean that uh, they were uh, protected uh, uh, from civil or uh, criminal punishment for any of the excesses that they were committing in the process of recovering uh, in, in the pro in the recover during the recovery process. Uh, so, the at the same time abducted women's uh, and the children's dem all democratic and fundamental rights of the abducted women and children were suspended virtually suspended. So, they did not make get to make any choice uh, regarding their future. And so, a comparison of honoring the moral obli obligation, um, honoring the moral obligation was raised uh, with uh, Pakistan uh, being portrayed as the abductor's nation and India as the parent protector nation. So, uh, Muslim women uh, according to India that the Muslim women that were abducted were uh, only cases of exceptions or aberrations. So, Hindu uh, as a general, uh, the, the stock image of the Hindu was that of the tolerant restrained male that shaped the spirit and the uh, core essence of the post colonial Indian nation state. So, the term abducted refers to it had a very specific meaning in the post uh, partition uh, starting from pre partition time and this meaning was uh, given temporal and uh, you know specific uh, conditional boundaries. Uh, so, abduction or the abducted, the abducted was not a very loose term, it had uh, its own uh, specific range of uh, meanings and uh, the, so the reference were uh, limited. We see abducted refers to a male that has been kidnapped after uh, March 1, 
1947, a child under the age of uh, 16 and a female of any age that has been forcefully removed from his or her family and uh, forced to live with a person or family from another community. So, the question uh, that arises in this context is what happened to people I mean uh, I mean who, who would who have experienced similar uh, situations, but uh, before 1st of March 1947 or who were a little uh, you know older uh, than 16 uh, years of age in the case of males. And so, uh, I mean uh, people uh, would ask, uh, I mean uh, there were no reasons, uh, the, the question of defining the abducted in terms of uh, a temporal bracket and an age bracket was something um, that left out a lot of other experiences that were similar. Uh, so, the recovery and restoration of kidnapped persons was uh, uh, so was deemed as so uh, vital was deemed so vital that uh, after a lot of uh, debate and deliberation the recovery and restoration of abducted persons act uh, of 1948 was passed it became a concrete act it was materialized as a it materialized into a concrete act and uh, menen and vasin butalia butalia menen and vasin note that regardless of uh, the desire of the people to remain where they were and the possibility that they would not be taken back by their families or not be espoused with um, significant uh, you know with, with considerable uh, respect and dignity, uh, elaborate plans were being made at the level of uh, governmental policies at the level of uh, uh, you know governmental bills and, and uh, acts that were being passed which uh, were uh, organizing the process of bringing back the women. So, the ministry of relief and uh, rehabilitation which later became the ministry of rehabilitation was established uh, by the Indian government in 1948 with a branch secretariat in Calcutta uh, for East Pakistani refugees. Uh, so, considering the need for a specific category, a plan was developed uh, in collaboration with the government to investigate the requirements of the Dalits and the women uh, separately. So, the Ministry of Rehabilitation drew up uh, elaborate plans to provide uh, housing, education and uh, employment uh, for the refugees. Uh, in fact, uh, when we look at the case of uh, the western part, the, the partition in the western part of India, uh, the Congress government actually uh, played a major role and uh, a commendable role at that in uh, supporting and rehabilitating the refugees. At, uh, at the outset, it was uh, however understood that uh, the number of people migrating to India was so large that uh, uh, it, it was uh, difficult for uh, the government of India, the newly uh, independent India to cope up with the uh, sheer numbers, sheer number of refugees, uh, the influx of refugees. So, a section of uh, Dalits and women were uh, also made part of the ministry of uh, rehabilitation who could look at the needs uh, of the respective groups and this uh, kept in mind the question of unique categories and their unique demands and uh, requirements. So, uh, post March 1947, we see uh, the leaders and representatives of the Indian and Pakistani government uh, meeting in Lahore uh, in September 1947 and uh, taking steps to recover and uh, to recover and restore the abducted person. Right? And we have already discussed how the definition of the abducted person the abducted person was uh, constrained to temporal and age boundaries and other cases were thereby uh, being overlooked. So, uh, and there were some typical uh, circumstances of abduction such as some women being left hostages uh, by their own families for the safe passage 
of the rest of the family members of the of, of their kin. So, uh, there were uh, many other uh, cases uh, where women strayed or separated from their group and they were picked up later uh, by, by uh, criminals. In other cases, uh, they were uh, sometimes uh, given protection and uh, later incorporated into the host family. There was this typical uh, uh, a peculiar situation in the Bhawalpur uh, state, uh, where all the women in a single block had been uh, left behind, uh, while the rest of the family had uh, crossed the border. And many of these women uh, from the block had changed hands uh, several times, some were sold to uh, the, the highest and the lowest bidders and uh, some went on to become second or third wives uh, of uh, males from the other community and uh, many were converted and uh, married and they were uh, treated with significant uh, considerable dignity and respect in the uh, abductor's family. So, uh, we cannot call uh, certain situations as abductions, where we see that uh, the families, their own families had actually abandoned them while uh, crossing the border. And uh, uh, that is why subsequently women face uh, a, uh, I mean they have to uh, kind of face a, a certain uh, uh, situation such as uh, conversion uh, and so on. So, uh, what they face, the uh, uh, adverse situation they face uh, is actually created uh, by a decision, uh, you know, that initiated in their own family and not uh, necessarily by the abductor. So, uh, in the official process of rescuing, resistance came from the abductors as well as the captors. So, women in many instances actually resist, they do not want to come back. Uh, many women, there were examples of women who, uh, there, there were cases of women that uh, escaped uh, from the centers where they were brought uh, for, for being sent back to their natal homes, to their natal homes. And uh, so, repatriation was in many instances not carried out under women's uh, own volition. Uh, we see Rameshwari Nehru, honorary uh, advisor to the government in the Ministry of Rehabilitation saying and I quote, by sending women away, we have brought about grief and dislocation of their accepted family life without in the least promoting human happiness, unquote. So, there were uh, situations uh, where women had become pregnant as, as a uh, result of, of forceful cohabitation. So, there was a case uh, where women uh, that were pregnant in Lahore uh, were sent to Jalandhar where they were, um, where they underwent a complete medical checkup. Uh, it is a euphemism used uh, for abortion and then they were uh, reunited with their family. Uh, for the fear that if, uh, for the fear that their family would abandon them, desert them uh, in pregnant conditions. The debates that were uh, raised at the, uh, the, at the level of government, at the level of the central government. Uh, so, children born in Pakistan would be left in the Pakistan, would be left in Pakistan and children born in India should be uh, left in India. So, this was a cruelty that was being inflicted on a woman that was already uh, brutalized. So, it would mean, so the question of number became more than individual choice or preference. A woman was reduced to uh, a womb. So, repatriating a younger woman that was capable of given, giving birth became more important and urgent than uh, bringing back uh, an old woman. So, a woman's national service, uh, service to nation was uh, necessary in terms of giving birth in her uh, homeland and uh, it was uh, tacitly understood that giving birth to male children, increasing the number of males in the community where she had originally belonged. So, that is why it was important to bring back the woman. But, leaving back the child, the illegitimate child, 
born of wrongful union. So, this once again went on to say that the father was the original you know um, uh, claimant of the child, the father uh, the child should be consigned to the father, he could uh, actually bring up the child more properly he was the original guardian, the mother as a guardian was not recognized. Uh, despite the fact that most women uh, especially the, the mothers of the first borns, the women that had become mother for the first time were not at all ready to give up their children, uh, many eventually had to uh, uh, acquire and uh, you know uh, uh, comply with uh, the familial pressure, with the pressure, tacit pressure at the level of the government and uh, so uh, these children, newborns were taken away by the abductor and his family. So, children born of such uh, children born of such unions were considered as illegitimate under uh, the act that defined. So, children born of such unions were considered illegitimate under the act the abducted persons act. So, children born under such uh, you know children born uh, under such unions were considered as illegitimate uh, under the abducted persons act. Uh, however, the irony uh, lay in the fact that uh, they were recognized under abducted persons, but never quite uh, uh, returned. Uh, and uh, in this debate, we see uh, leaders such as Pandit uh, Thakur Das Bhargav uh, saying that while abduction was a shameful crime, it was recognized as uh, something uh, to be condemned, the abductor could not be uh, relied upon to provide security or dignity to the woman that he had forcibly converted and married and therefore, she should be reunited to her original home. So, uh, at the same time the paradox in this particular uh, perspective that many ministers uh, or leaders at that time adopted, the paradox lay in the fact that they were uh, asking the children uh, to be left with the father. So, the children uh, in the case of Thakur Das Bhargav who was, uh, who was uh, an inhabitant of India, a Hindu, he would say that there is no reason why a child born in India should not be a citizen of India. In other words, um, if it is a child born of a, a Hindu uh, male abductor, uh, the child should be given the father's name. So, this contradicted uh, the 1949 bill defining abducted person. And uh, there were counter logics coming from Pakistan that illegitimate children born of a Muslim woman will be marginalized in the caste system that defined and, and uh, that uh, actually that shaped the Hindu society in India. In, in fact, the question of illegitimacy, of question of uh, impurity uh, were more important uh, for uh, uh, and uh, were, uh, you know considered more seriously uh, by the Hindus uh, than the Muslims because of the uh, caste system that is intrinsically a part of the Hindu society. So, Pandit uh, Kunzru uh, raised uh, the question if a woman keeps a child uh, with her and takes uh, the child to her original home, uh, will the child be treated as a normal member of the mother's family? So, here is where we see the patriarchal values coming in the question of blood and lineage being identified with the uh, father's name and the father's family. So, uh, just like in, a no in normal times the father uh, albeit being an abductor was uh, considered as uh, the suitable person that could give uh, his name to the child regardless of uh, the community this was uh, the de decision, this was the uh, agreement that both nations had reached. Uh, so, a child uh, would be more comfortable and secure with the abducted father's family, uh, although the man had originally committed or uh, you know conducted a heinous crime. So, government policies actively discouraged women from taking their children. Uh, and pressured uh, the pregnant women uh, to, to terminate 
uh, the, the pregnancy and return to their families. Uh, so, the initial ordinance uh, on children in 1948 was a response uh, to the experience of social workers. Uh, so, so, why were women uh, being asked to terminate? Uh, social workers uh, uh, saw that the Hindu families, uh, this was more in the case of the Hindus um, that hesitated to take back their uh, female kin. Uh, especially if a child was born uh, as a result of a union outside of the community. So, women's dilemma uh, lay in the fact that they were kidnapped, uh, they were kidnapped, uh, women's dilemma lay in the fact that they were kidnapped uh, as far as uh, you know markers or, or you know identify, they were kidnapped and identified as part of one community dressed and converted uh, into another and then they were again rescued and um, sent back to the original community and forced to leave back their children. So, uh, women face the brunt, it would not be wrong to say that women face the brunt of uh, the partition and these their children were being disowned as impure who were neither Hindu nor Muslim. So, throughout the repatriation process the issue of maintaining uh, communal purity and difference, the question of blood and belonging uh, uh, actually prompted these uh, bills and these policies, these acts uh, and they were being etched on the bodies of women and children. The law makers, the policy makers were necessarily the enactors and the makers of the nation, the males whereas they were being etched on the bodies of the women and the children. So, a reaction to the erosion of uh, Hindu dharma and the concomitant anxiety uh, was there regarding the Muslims and uh, the Christians making inroads into uh, the, the, the chaste and you know uh, the, the uh, sacrosanct uh, Hindu, uh, the Hinduness the pristine Hinduness was being uh, besieged by the uh, Muslims and the uh, Christians. So, recovery becomes uh, a process that is similar to Shuddhi Karam, the Shuddhi program or uh, purification uh, that was uh, uh, observable in the Arya Samaj, a process of taking the Dalits, uh, the fringes of Hindu uh, community within the mainstream. So, not losing the newly born Hindus to Islam uh, was ensured through preventing uh, their uh, you know the, the, the children to pre from uh, through preventing the children from um, being taken away with their mothers. So, uh, this was a way the Hindus would uh, you know could maintain their numbers uh, by preventing the repatriation of the wrongly born children. Uh, to, to go back with their mothers to Pakistan. It was a vital part of this project and uh, concern. So, and this anxiety uh, reflected at all levels uh, the question of legitimate membership at the level of family, community and the larger nation. So, India prevented uh, uh, sexuality to be contaminated by secularism. So, this is another paradox that we have to uh, understand. On the one hand, um, we talk about uh, the, the constitution talks about uh, secularism, about democracy. There are certain values uh, that are uh, glorified in the Indian con constitution, but on the other hand, secularism, what, uh, uh, secularism was not uh, something celebrated uh, as far as the question of marriage and sexual union was considered. So, there was neither social uh, uh, you know recognition, neither social recognition nor legal sanctioning of uh, alliances uh, uh, you know formed between uh, Hindu, uh, Hindus and Muslims, especially uh, in the cases where they were done uh, you know when, when they were uh, done forcefully. So, uh, and uh, so relocating a woman's sexuality from uh, fake to real family, uh, where her sexuality could be suitably supervised 
became a part of this project. So, uh, Julia Kristeva notes that freezing of boundaries and sexual nationalist and religious protectionism reduce men and uh, especially the women to the identification needs of their original groups. Uh, so, uh, going back to the question of uh, the, the grand narrative and the personal narrative, the personal uh, narrative is uh, obfuscated almost invisibilized and muffled uh, uh, by force uh, and, and from above by the grand narrative. The requirement of the image formation, requirement of image formation uh, by the uh, group, the larger group. And so, these individuals are imprisoned in the primal cosmos of, uh, you know, to begin with uh, the primal cosmos of family and then ethnicity, nation and race. They are no longer uh, a separate being in charge of uh, and, uh, you know, in charge of and having the right to uh, decide their own future, entitled to their own future. So, neither of the two nations uh, abutting nations India and Pakistan actually allowed women to exercise choice freely. Uh, we see the realities of attacks and abductions, uh, families uh, that had their daughters taken first uh, reported them missing uh, and however, they chose uh, to remain anonymous. Uh, for the fear of losing their face, they losing their prestige, losing their prestige in a given society. And uh, ha on the other hand, when some of these women were discovered, it often resulted in the social workers being dispatched. So, in many cases, it was not even um, considered as uh, desirable that these women uh, come back. So, the social workers were not really congratulated for doing the right job by discovering the women. It was uh, expected that they would uh, not be found anymore and families would lodge complaints, but under anonymity. And uh, so, the families frequently refused to accept them and considered them as contaminated. So, there is a paradox uh, where India as I have already uh, talked about this, it is important and so I restate India was a secular country. After the independence, India declared itself as secular and yet uh, demanded the return of Hindu women, they dem India demanded the return of Hindu women that were abducted during the partition and return of the Muslim women to Pakistan. So, although India was secular, uh, Hindu women were uh, thought as uh, you know justifiably belonging to India. So, there was the, the operations were uh, you know uh, done to bring back the Hindu women and send the Muslim women to Pakistan. So, uh, the natural belonging or natural identification uh, of India uh, was with the Hindus. Uh, so, the new nation state was responsible for safeguarding the integrity of the spiritual core of the uh, inhabitants and uh, it drew its uh, inspiration from uh, Hindu principles and values. So, there were widespread kidnapping and rape in the, uh, there, there were cases in the Gurgaon district on the outskirts of Delhi and uh, so, uh, Andrew Major uh, calls it this process of uh, you know uh, violence on women in, in Delhi as a deliberate case of uh, a deliberate uh, process of ethnic cleansing. And in Amritsar, uh, we see women are being uh, unclothed and uh, made to parade. And uh, police landed magnets, uh, Muslim League members, they were all uh, you know they all harbored and protected criminal elements, shady elements. Uh, and uh, the perpetrators actually belong to these uh, prominent, uh, belong to one of these uh, prominent umbrellas. And so, they could actually go scot free after, uh, uh, after you know committing such acts. So, non-Muslim women from Kashmir were abducted and sold by the Pathans in western 
Punjab and they were used as uh, slave girls in industries. Uh, Pathans had also started abducting and selling Muslim women and the Sikh Jats and refugees from uh, so, in addition to the Sikh Jats and uh, uh, refugees from the western Punjab, the local police, the Indian military uh, routinely abducted and distributed Muslim women in eastern Punjab. So, Anis Kidwai looks at the words that are used, the better stuff women are treated as commodity. So, the better stuff would be, the better stuff would be dispersed to the police and the troops while the remainder would be distributed among the assailants. So, police army forces were engaged in violating uh, the Muslims in, uh, in and around Delhi and so both the prime ministers uh, Nehru and uh, Liaquat Ali Khan had uh, decided by uh, September 1947 that they would not uh, uh, accept forced marriages and both the nations uh, univocally, univocally approved uh, this agreement in December uh, at uh, at the inter dominion co conference which created the recovery uh, mechanism. So, the central recovery officers in both the nations were in charge of gathering claims for abducted women by their family. So, social workers, district liaison officers designated by the Punjab government's liaison agency uh, contributed significantly. Non Muslim women uh, recovered from Pakistan were housed in uh, district transit camps, the central camp being in Lahore, uh, and similar camp for Muslim women was built in Jalandhar. Uh, and women were also, there were also cases where women were guarded and is, uh, escorted uh, successfully to their respective countries by both the Indian and the Pakistani military evacuation organizations. So, uh, when recovery operations were being delayed, uh, Nehru admitted by 1948 uh, January that neither side had really worked hard enough to repatriate the victims in the true sense. And uh, because uh, the Hindus and the Sikhs, the uh, Hindu and Sikh refugees erroneously believed that uh, uh, the abducted, uh, uh, they erroneously believed that the number of abducted non-Muslim women outnumbered the number of abducted Muslim women. They organized public campaigns uh, demanding that uh, the Muslim woman be kept as a hostage in India till the Indian women were recovered successfully. So, this was another form of uh, you know patriarchal uh, 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 intervention in this very sensitive issue, the Muslim women be kept as hostage in India till Pakistan returns all the Indian women. This was the outlook of several Hindus and Sikhs. The two governments had eventually agreed not to publicize the number of women. So, it was a kind of contestation centering the women, uh, the numbers of women uh, that were returned and the rivalry between India and Pakistan delayed the process of recovery. And there were rains, natural uh, disasters such as rain, floods that hampered the recovery process uh, further in places of uh, West Punjab. And so, Paki Pakistan banned um, Indian authorities from accessing the different regions of Punjab that bordered Kashmir uh, by January 1948. So, uh, both governments uh, agreed by 1954 finally that women should not be deported forcefully. And with this, I would like to stop today's lecture. Thank you.